as they say about checks, you ought to conceive that the scene is laid in your own house and that Harry Sims is you. Perhaps the ornamentation of the house is a trifle ostentatious, but if you cavil at that, we are willing to redecorate. You don't get out of being Harry Sims on a mere matter of plush and dados. It pleases us to make him a city man, but rather than lose you, he can be turned with a scrape of a pen into a casey. Fashionable doctor, secretary of state, or what you will. We conceive him of a pleasant rotundity with a thick red neck, but we shall waive that point if you know him to be thin. It is that day in your career when everything went wrong, just when everything seemed to be superlatively right. In Harry's case, it was a woman who did the mischief. She came to him in his great hour and told him she did not admire him. Of course, he turned her out of the house and was soon himself again, but it spoiled the morning for him. This is the subject of our play, and quite enough too. Harry is to receive the honor of knighthood in a few days, and we discover him in the sumptuous snuggery of his home in Kensington, or is it Westminster? Rehearsing the ceremony with his wife, they have been at it all the morning, a pleasing occupation. Mrs. Sims, as we may call her for the last time, as it were, and strictly as a good naked joke, is wearing her presentation gown, and personates the august one who is about to dub her Harry Knight. She is seated regally. Her jeweled shoulders proclaim aloud her husband's generosity. She must be an extraordinarily proud and happy woman, yet she has a drawn face and shrinking ways as if there were someone near her of whom she is afraid. She claps her hands as a signal to Harry. He enters bowing and with a graceful swerve of the leg. He is only partly in costume, the sword not having arrived yet. With a gliding motion that is only delayed while one leg makes it up on the other, he reaches his wife, and going on one knee, raises her hand superbly to his lips. She taps him on the shoulder with a paper knife and says huskily, Rise, Sir Harry. He rises, bows, and glides about the room, going on his knees to various articles of furniture, and rising from each, a knight. It is a radiant domestic scene, and Harry is as dignified as if he knew that royalty was rehearsing it at the other end. Did that seem all right, eh? I think perfect. But was it dignified? Oh, very. And it will still be more so when you have the sword. The sword will lend to it an air. Ah, there are really the five moments. The glide, the dip, the kiss, the tap, and you back away a knight. It's short, but a very beautiful ceremony. Anything you can suggest? No, oh no. You don't think you can practice till you know what to do almost too well? He has been in a blissful temper, but such niggling criticism would try any man. No, I do not. <laughs> do not talk nonsense. Wait till your opinion is asked for. I'm sorry. A perfect maid appears and presents a card. The Flora Typewriting Agency. Oh, yes, I uh, telephoned them to send someone. A woman, I suppose, don't? Yes, Sir Harry. Ah, show her in. He has very lately become a stickler for etiquette. And don't, strictly speaking, you know, are not Sir Harry till first? Oh, beg pardon, sir, but it is such a satisfaction to us. Ah, they like it downstairs, do well, they? Especially the female Sir Harry. <laughs> exactly. Show her in, don't. The maid departs on her mighty task. You may tell the woman what she's wanted for, Emmy, while I change. He is too modest to boast about himself, and prefers to keep a wife in the house for that purpose. You may tell her the sorts of things that would better come from you. <laughs> Did you hear what Tomes said about especially the females? <laughs> she's right, you know. Success! The women like it even more than the men, <laughs> for they share. You share Lady Sims? Not a woman in the world will see that down without being sick with envy of it. Ha, I know them. Have all our lady friends in to see it. Ha, it will make them ill for a week. These sentiments carry them off lightheartedly, and presently the disturbing element is shown in. She is a mere typist, dressed in uncommonly good taste, but a 
with contemptibly small expense. And she is carrying her typewriter in a friendly way, rather than as a badge of slavery, as of course it is. Her eye is clear, and in all contrast to Lady Sims, she is self-reliant and serene. Good morning, madam. Good morning. As a first impression, she rather likes the woman, and the woman, though it is scarcely worth mentioning, rather likes her. Lady Sims has a maid for buttoning and unbuttoning her, and probably another for waiting on the maid. And she gazes with a little envy, perhaps, at a woman who does things for herself. Is that the typewriting machine? Yes. I suppose if I'm to take the uh, work here, I may take this off. I get on better without it. <laughs> Certainly. I ought to apologize for my gown. I am to be presented this week, and I was trying it on. The tone is not really apologetic. She is rather clinging to the glory of her gown wistfully, as though not absolutely certain that it is a glory. It is beautiful, if I may presume to say so. She frankly admires it. She probably has a best and a second best of her own. That sort of thing. Yes, it is very beautiful. But sit down, please. I suppose it is some copying you want done. I got no particulars. I was told to come to this address, but that is all. Oh, it is not work to be done for me. It is for my husband. And what he needs is not exactly copying. He wants a number of letters answered, hundreds of them letters, and telegrams of congratulation. Yes? Lady Sims, remembering that Harry expects every wife to do her duty, says, <clears throat> My husband is a remarkable man. He is about to be knighted. He is to be knighted for his services to... For his services... Oh, he can explain it so much better than I can. And I'm to answer the congratulations? Yes. It is work I have some experience of. But you can't begin till you know what he wants to say. Only a specimen letter. Won't it be the usual thing? Is there a usual thing? Oh, yes. She continues to type, and Lady Sims, half mesmerized, gazes at her nimble fingers. The useless woman watches the useful one, and she sighs. She could not tell why. How quickly you do it. It must be delightful to be able to do something and to do it well. Yes, it is delightful. But excuse me, I don't think that will be any use. My husband wants me to explain that his is an exceptional case. He did not try to get this honor in any way. It was a complete surprise to him. Kate, who is a practical Kate and no dealer in sarcasm, says, That is what I have written. Lady Sims, in whom sarcasm would meet a dead wall, replies, But how could you know? Oh, I only guessed. Is that the usual thing? Oh, yes. They don't try to get it. I don't know. That is what we are told to say in the letters. To her at present, the only important thing about the letters is that they are worth ten shillings the hundred. I should explain that my husband is not a man who cares for honours, so long as he does his duty. I have been putting that in. Have you? But he particularly wants it to be known that he would have declined a title were it I not put it here. What have you got? Indeed, I would have asked to be allowed to decline had it not been that I want to please my wife. But how could you know it was that? Is it? Lady Sims, who after all is the one with the right to ask questions, asks, Do they all accept it for that reason? That is what we are told to say in the letters. <laughs> it is quite as if you knew my husband. I assure you, I don't even know his name. Oh, he wouldn't like that. And it is here that Harry re-enters in his city garments, looking so gay and feeling so jolly that we bleed for him. However, the annoying Catherine is to get a shock also. This is the lady, Harry. <laughs> yes, yes. Good morning, my dear. Then they see each other, and their mouths open, but not for words. <clears throat> After the first shock, Kate seems to find some humor in the situation, but Harry <laughs> lowers like a thundercloud. I have been trying to explain to her. Uh, what? <laughs> uh, leave her to me, Emmy. I will attend to her. Lady Sims goes with a dread fear that somehow she has vexed her lord, and then Harry attends to the intruder. You. Yes. It's funny. The shamelessness in not daring to come here. Oh, believe me, it is not less a surprise to you than it is to me. I was sent you in the ordinary way of business. I was only given the number of the house. I was not told the name. The ordinary way of business. Uh, is this what you were fallen to? A typist? Oh, think of it. After going through worse straits, I'll be bound. Much worse straits. Oh, my congratulations. Oh, thank you, Harry. Uh, what was that you called me, madam? Isn't it Harry? On my soul, I almost forgot. It isn't Harry to you. My name is Sims, if you please. I had not forgotten that. It was my name too, you see. It was your name till you forfeited the right to bear it. Exactly. <laughs> I was furious to see you here, but on second thoughts, it quite pleases me. There is a grim 
justice and all this. Tell me. Do you know what you've been brought here to do? I have just been learning. You have been made a knight, and I was sent to messages the congratulations. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You come on this day as my servant. I, who might have been Lady Sims. And you are her typist instead, and she yes. has four manservants. Oh, I am glad you saw her in her presentation gown. I wonder if she would let me do her washing, Sir Harry. Her want of taste disgusts him. You can go. The mere thought that only a few flights of stairs separate such as you from my innocent children. You have children? Yeah, two. Such a nice number. Both boys. Oh, successful in everything. Are they like you, Sir Harry? They're very much like me. That's nice. Will it please you to go? Oh, yeah. What shall I tell my employer? <laughs> that is no affair of mine. What shall you tell Lady Sims? I flatter myself that whatever I say, Lady Sims will accept without comment. She smiles, heaven knows why, unless her next remark explains it. Still the same Harry. What do you mean? Only that you have the old confidence in your profound knowledge of the sex. Sir Harry, beginning to think as little of her intellect as of her moral sense. I suppose I know my wife. Oh, I suppose so. I was only remembering that you used to think you knew her in the days when I was the lady. <laughs> well, <laughs> goodbye, Sir Harry. Won't you ring and the four men servants will show me out? As you are here, there is something I want to get from you. Tell me, who was the man? You never found out. I could never be sure. I thought that would worry you. It is plain enough he soon left you. Oh, very soon. As I could have told you. Who was he? It was 14 years ago and cannot matter to any of us now. Kate, tell me who he was. It is his first youthful moment, and perhaps because of that, she does not wish to hurt him. Better not ask. I do ask. Tell him. It is kinder not to tell you. Th then by James, was it one of my own pals? Was it Bernard Roche? Ah, it might be someone who comes to my house still. I think not. Fourteen years. You found my letter that night when you went home? Yes. I propped it up against the decanters. I thought you would be sure to see it there. It was a room not unlike this, and the furniture was arranged in the same attractive way. How it all comes back to me. Don't you see me, Harry, in hat and cloak, putting the letter there, taking one last look round, and then stealing off into the night to meet? Whom? Him. Hours pass and no sound. Tick tack the clock. And then around midnight, you return home alone. You take I wasn't alone. No. Oh. Here I have all these years been conceiving it wrongly. But I believe something interesting happened. Something confoundingly annoying. Oh, do tell me. We won't go into that. Tell me, who was the man? Surely a husband has the right to know with whom his wife boasted. Surely the wife has a right to know how he took it. <laughs> A fair exchange. You tell me what happened, and I will tell you who he was. You will? <laughs> Very well. It is the first point on which they have agreed. Oh, quite like old times. Go on, Harry. Sir Harry, <laughs> who has a mouthful shrinking from saying anything that is to his disadvantage, says... As you know, I was dining at the club that night. Yes? Uh, Jack Lamb drove me home, Mabbit Green was with us, uh, and they came in for a few minutes. Jack Lamb and Mabbitt Green. I think I remember them. Jack was in Parliament. No, no, that was Mabbitt. Uh, they came in to finish uh, for a few minutes and... Uh, what, what, what's a kid? Who? Mabbitt. What? The man! What man? <laughs> no, I thought you said he came into the house with you. Well, it might have been a blind. Well, it wasn't. Go on. They came in to finish a talk we'd been having with the club. An interesting talk, evidently. The papers had been full that evening of the elopement of some countess woman with a fiddler. What was her name? Does it matter? No. We had been discussing the thing and... and I had been rather warm. I begin to see. You had been saying that it served the husband right that the man who could not look after his wife deserved to lose her. It was your favorite subject. Harry, say it was that. It might have been something like that. And all the while the letter was there waiting and none of you knew it except the clock. Harry, it is sweet of you to tell me. <laughs> I forgot what I said precisely in the letter. No, so do I. But, but I have it still. Oh, do let me see it again. <laughs> you are welcome to it as a gift. Yes, this is it. Harry, 
I'm going to crumple it. <laughs> Dear husband, I call you that for the last time. I'm off. I'm what you call making a boat of it. I will try to make excuses, nor to explain, for you would not accept the excuses, nor understand the explanation. It will be a little shock to you, but only to your pride. What will astound you is that any woman could be such a fool as to leave such a man as you. I am taking nothing with me that belongs to you. May you be very happy. Your ungrateful Kate. P.S. You need not try to find out who he is. You will try to succeed. I may really have it for my very own. You really may. If you would care for a typed copy. <laughs> None of your sauce. I had to let them see it in the end. I can picture Dakla eating it. A penniless parson's daughter. That is what I was. We searched for the two of you high and low. Private detectives. Oh, uh, no, they can get on the track of you. No. But at last, the courts let me sell the papers by advertisement on a man unknown, and I got my freedom. Oh, so I saw. It was the last I heard of you. And I married again just as soon as ever I could. They say that it was always a compliment to the first wife. <laughs> I showed them. Oh, you soon let them see that. One woman was a fool, you still had the pick of the basket to choose from. By James, I did. But still, you wondered who he was. I suspected everyone, even my own pals. I felt like jumping at their throats and crying, it's you! You had been so admirable to me. An instinct told you I was sure to choose another of the same. Uh, and it couldn't have been money, so it must have been looks. Some dolly face. You must have had something wonderful about him to make you willing to give up everything you had with me. Poor Harry. Well, and it couldn't have been going on for very long, for I would have noticed the change in you. Would you? I knew you so well. Oh, you amazing man. So? Who was he? Out with it! You are determined to know? Your promise. You gave your word. If I must. She is the villain of the piece, but it must be conceded that in this matter she is reluctant to pain him. I'm sorry I promised. There was no one, Harry. No one at all. If you think you can play with me! I told you you wouldn't like it. Hey, it is unbelievable! I suppose it is, but it is true. Tell your letter itself gives you the lie. That was intentional. I saw that if the truth were known, you might have a difficulty in getting your freedom. And as I was getting mine, it seemed fair you should have yours also. So I wrote my goodbye in words that would be taken to meant what you thought they meant. And I knew the law would back you in your opinion. For the law, like you, Harry, has a profound understanding of women. I don't believe you yet. Kate, looking not unkindly into the soul of this man, says... Perhaps that is the best way to take it. It is less unflattering than the truth. But you were the only one. You sufficed. <laughs> then what mad impulse? There's no impulse, Harry. I'd thought it out for a year. <gasps> a year? Oh, I would think to hear you that I hadn't been a very good husband to you. You were a good husband according to your lights. I think so. And a moral man. And chatty. Quite the philanthropist. Oh, women envied you. How you loved me to be envied. I swatted you in luxury. That was it. What? How you beamed at me while I sat at the head of your fat dinners in my fat jewellery, surrounded by our fat friends. They weren't so fat. Well, except those who were so very thin. Have you ever noticed, Harry, that many jewels either make women incredibly fat or incredibly thin? I have not. But we had all the most interesting society of the day. There weren't only businessmen, there were politicians, painters, writers. Only the glorious, dazzling successes. Oh, the fat talk while we ate too much about who had made a hit and who was slipping back, and how much the new house cost, and the new motor, and the gold the soup plates, and who was to be the new knight. Sir Harry, who it will be observed is unanswerable from first to last, asks... Was anybody getting on better than me, and consequently you? Consequently me? Oh, Harry, you and your sublime religion. My religion? I was never one to talk about religion. Oh, who, Harry, you don't even know what your religion was, and is, and will be until the day of your expensive funeral. One's religion is whatever he is most interested in, and yours is success. <laughs> Ambition is the last infirmity of noble minds. Noble minds? Sir Harry, at last grasping what she is talking about, asks... You're not saying you left me because of my success? Yes, that was it. I couldn't endure it. If a failure had come now and then, but your success was suffocating me, the passionate craving I had to be done with it, to find myself among people who had not got on. <laughs> there are plenty of them. There were none in our set. When they began to go downhill, they rolled out of our sight. <laughs> I tell you, I am worth a quarter of a million. That is what you are worth yourself. I'll tell you.
you what you are worth to me. Exactly 12 pounds. I made up my mind that I could launch myself on the world alone if I first proved my metal by earning 12 pounds. And as soon as I earned it, I left you. 12 pounds? That is your value to a woman. If she can't make it, she has to stick to you. You valued me at more than that when you married me. But I didn't know you then, Harry. If only you had been a man. A man? What are you talking about, a man? <sighs> Haven't you heard of them? They are something fine, and every woman is loath to admit to herself that a husband is not one. When she marries, even if she has been a very trivial person, there is within her some vague stirring toward a worthy life, as well as a fear of her capacity for evil. She knows her chance lies in him. If there is something good in him, what is good in her finds it, and they join forces against the baser parts. So I didn't give you up willingly, Harry. I invented all sorts of theories to explain you. Your hardness, I said it was final one to the mortgages. Your coarseness, I said it was with strength. Your contempt of the weak was virility. Your want of ideals was clear sightedness. Your ignoble views of women. I tried to think of fun. Oh, how I clung to you to save myself. But I had to let go. You had only the one quality, Harry. Success. You had it so strong that it swallowed all the others. How did you earn this 12 pounds? <laughs> it took me nearly six months, but I earned it fairly. She presses her hand on the typewriter, as lovingly as many a woman has pressed a rose. I learned this. I hired it and taught myself. I got to work for a friend, and with my first 12 pounds, I paid for my machine. Then I considered that I was free to go, and I went. All of this going on in my house while you were living in the lap of luxury? My God, you were determined. I was. How you must have hit. Not a bit of it, Harry. After I saw that there was a way out, from that hour you amused me. I even felt sorry for you, for I saw that you couldn't really help yourself. Success really is just a fatal gift. Oh, thank you. Kate, thinking dear friends in front of you and me, perhaps, says... Yes, and, and some of your most successful friends knew it. One or two of them used to look very sad at times, as if they thought they might have come to something if they had not got on. Well, in this badger crew you live amongst now, uh, what are they but folk who have tried to succeed and fail? That's it. They try, but they fail. And always will fail. Always. Poor souls, I say of them. Poor soul, they say of me. It keeps us human. That is why I never tire of them. <laughs> Kate, I tell you, I'll be worth it. Half a million yet. Oh, I'm sure you will. You're getting sad, Harry. No, I'm not. What was the name of that fat old fellow who used to fall asleep at our dinner parties? If you mean Sir William Crack. That was the man. Sir William was to me the perfect picture of the grand success. He had got on so well that he was very, very stout. And when he sat on a chair, it was thus. Her hands meeting in front of As her. if you were holding all of his success together. That is what you are working for, Harry. You will have that and a half million at about the same time. <laughs> will you please to leave my house? Oh, but don't let us part in anger. How do you think I'm looking, Harry, compared to the dull, inert thing that used to roll around in your pad of carriages? I quite forget what you were like. I'm very sure you never could have held a candle to the present Lady Seals. This is a picture of her, is it not? Yes, in her wedding gown, painted by an RA. A knight? Yes. Kate, who likes Lady Sims, says... It is a pretty face. Acknowledged to be a beauty everywhere. There is a merry look in the eyes and character in the cheek. Noted for her wit. All her life before her when this was painted. It's a spiritual face, too. Suddenly she turns on him with anger for the first and only time in the play. Oh, Harry, you brute! Hey, what? That dear creature capable of becoming a noble wife and mother. She is the spiritless woman of no account that I met here a few minutes ago. I forgive you for myself, for I escaped with that poor lost soul. Oh, Harry, Harry! Oh, thank you! If ever there was a woman proud of her husband and happy in her married life, that woman is Lady Sim. I wonder. Then you needn't wonder. If I were a husband, it is my advice to all of them that I should often watch my wife quietly to see whether the 12 pound lock were coming into her eyes. <gasps> Two boys, did you say? And both like you. What is that to you? I was only thinking that somewhere there are two little girls who, when they grow up, the dear pretty girls are all meant for the men that don't get on. Well, goodbye, Sir Harry. 
Say first that you're sorry. For what? That you left me. Say that you regret it bitterly. You know you do. She smiles and shakes her head. He is pettish. He makes a terrible announcement. You have spoiled the day for me. I am sorry for that. It is only a pinprick, Harry. I suppose it is a little jarring in the moment of your triumph to find that there is one old friend who does not think you a success. But you will soon forget it. Who cares what a typist thinks? <laughs> Nobody. A typist at 18 shillings a week. Not a bit of it, Harry. I double that. Oh. Magnificent. There is a timid knock at the door. May I come in? <laughs> it is Lady Sims. I won't tell. She is afraid to come into her husband's room without knocking. She is not. Come in, dearest. Dearest enters, carrying the sword. She might have had the sense not to bring it in while this annoying person is here. Harry, the sword has come. Uh, all right. The person smiles. I thought you were so eager to practice with it. He wishes he had not looked to see if she was smiling. Put it down. It is a beautiful sword, if I may presume to say so. Yes. The person thinks she can put him in the wrong, does she? He'll show her. Emmy, the one thing your neck needs is more jewels. Uh, more? Uh, some ropes of pearls. Uh, I'll see to it. Tis a bagatelle to me. Kate conceals her chagrin, so she had better be shown the door. He rings. I won't detain you any longer, miss. Thank you. Oh, you're leaving already. You have been very quick. The person doesn't suit Emmy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, but it can't be helped. Well. <laughs> Goodbye, your ladyship. Goodbye, Sir Harry. There is suspicion of an impertinent curtsy, and she is escorted off the premises by turns. <laughs> the air is purified at her leaving, and Sir Harry notices it at once. She seemed such a capable woman. <laughs> I don't like her style at all. Of course, you know best. This is the right kind of woman. Uh, Lord, how she winced when I said I was to give you those ropes of pearls. Did she? I didn't notice. I suppose so. Suppose? <laughs> Certainly I know enough about women to know that. Yes, oh yes. Emmy, I, I know you well, don't I? I could read you like a book, eh? Yes, Harry. What a different existence yours is from that poor, lonely wretches. Yes, but she had a very contented face. <laughs> All put on. But what? I didn't say anything. One would seem to think you envied her. Envied? Oh, no. But she looked so alive. It was while she was working the machine. Alive? That is no life. It is you who are alive. I'm busy, Emmy. I'm sorry. I'll go, Harry. Are they very expensive? What? Those machines. <laughs> when she has gone, the possible meaning of her question startles him. But we may be sure that he will soon be planned again. We have a comfortable feeling, you and I, that there is nothing of Harry's sins in us. But... If we are lucky, perhaps there is a little bit of Kate. <laughs>